Hi, a very warm welcome to this short video all about Lent. Lent is the 40 days before Easter. It's a time of preparation for Easter. It's a time to have a spiritual workout. In Lent, Christians reflect upon how they are living their lives and how that measures up to how God expects them to live. For example, they might think about how they care for this amazing planet. They might spend more time in prayer and healthy adults might fast or they might choose to give something up. This is called an act of self-denial. Instead of giving something up, they may do something extra like studying the Bible online with their friends and thinking less about their own needs and fo focusing more on the needs of others, which shows God's love in action. So I don't know if you've heard of Shrove Tuesday. Well done if you have. In all the shops and on TV, it's called Pancake Day, but the correct name is Shrove Tuesday. So now over to Father Nick to tell you all about why we have pancakes. Hello everyone. Is there anyone who doesn't enjoy a pancake? or two, or maybe even more. I think it's perhaps not just the pancakes themselves, but all the lovely things we put on them. What's your favourite? I think I prefer good old fashioned lemon and sugar, or maybe even Nutella. You know, pancakes are so important. They even have a day named after them, Pancake Day. But in the church, we rather prefer to call that day Shrove Tuesday. It's the day before Ash Wednesday, which is the first day of Lent, but more of that from Father David later. Shrove Tuesday is a day of penitence, of being sorry, a day to clean the soul, and also a day of celebration as the ch last chance to feast before Lent begins. But there's more to Shrove Tuesday than just pigging out on pancakes or taking part in a pancake race. The pancakes themselves are part of an ancient custom with deeply religious roots. But first of all, what does the word shrove mean? It's an old Anglo-Saxon word which means being forgiven for wrongdoings. Long ago, people went to church to confess the bad things they had done and would be shriven or forgiven before the start of Lent. Shrove Tuesday is a day of celebration as well as penitence, as it's the last day before Lent. It's the last chance to indulge yourself and to use up all the foods that aren't allowed in Lent. Giving up foods, but of course not wasting them. In the old days there were many foods that observant Christians would not eat during Lent. Foods such as meat and fish, fat such as butter or margarine, eggs and dairy. So that no food was wasted, families would have a feast on the Shriving Tuesday and eat up all the foods that wouldn't last the 40 days of Lent without going off. So that's why it's called Shrove Tuesday, or perhaps for some of us Pancake Day. So enjoy your pancakes, but as you are doing so, try to remember the reason for making them and have a good Lent. See you soon. Thank you, Father Nick. That was really interesting. Hello, Fido. Ah, oh, I wondered where you were. You're not usually far away when food's mentioned, are you? No, you're not. Do you remember what we were doing together this time last year? Do you remember? You've forgotten. Well, I tell you what, if you take a look at these pictures on screen, you might remember what we were doing. Do you think you might do that? OK, so just take a look at these pictures and see if they jog your memory. OK, here they go. Now, you don't need to get that close to the screen. Come back a bit, sweetheart. That's a good boy.
So, do you remember now what we were doing this time last year? You do? It was great fun being in church. It was, it was great fun being with everybody, all the boys and girls in church at that lovely big service. Yes, and it was a good job that Father David caught that flying egg. Yes, it was, wasn't it? It was a good job. And you found a picture of me with dirt on my head. You have. Oh, let me have a look at it then. Oh, that, that's not dirt on my head. That's just ash. It was after the Ash Wednesday service. And one of the other ministers had put ash on my head and I'd put ash on their head. That's all it was. All right, can you remember Ash Wednesday? You're looking a bit blank. Ash Wednesday? You can't remember anything about Ash Wednesday. Well, don't worry because Father David's going to tell you all about it. All right, are you ready? Good morning. So what is Ash Wednesday? Well, Ash Wednesday is the first day of a very important time in our Christian year called Lent. So let me tell you a little bit more about Ash Wednesday itself. It's so called because some Christians go to church to be ashed, to have a sign of the cross made on their foreheads in ash, to boldly show that they are truly sorry for their sins. The ashes are made from burning palm crosses from the previous Palm Sunday and they're ground up finely with some olive oil. On the day, the priest, that's me or Helen or Nick, we invite people to come up to the front of the church to have the ash put on their foreheads. This is called the imposition of ashes. Now, because of COVID-19, we won't be having a public service for ashing this year, but you can watch the Eucharist, the Eucharist on Ash Wednesday online and I will ash my own head on behalf of everyone else. You can watch that service online on Facebook or our YouTube channel. Now, there's something else you might notice in church during Lent, and that is that the vestments that's the clothes that we wear when we take the service, a purple during Lent, because purple represents repentance and saying sorry. So hopefully that's given you a brief understanding of Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent. So let us allow Lent to be a special time of blessing for you and your family this year. Bye for now. God bless. Well, thank you, Father David. Did you find that interesting, Fido? You did, you found that really interesting. But you want to go now, where are you going? You're going into the kitchen to make some pancakes. Okay, all right, bye bye. Bye. Mwah. Bye. Ah, oh, now he's gone, we can have a good chat in peace, can't we? Now, if you want a really good story for Lent, you can read about how Jesus was driven into the desert by the Spirit of God. And there he spent time fasting and praying and just getting his head into the right place because he'd got a lot of tough times to come and he needed to feel really strong inside. So you can read the story of Jesus' temptations for yourself in the Bible in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13. Now I won't spoil the story um, but in brief it's set at the start of Jesus' three-year public ministry. He's about to go off and do lots of preaching, sharing the good news of the kingdom of God, healing the sick and teaching people how they should love one another and he really needed some quality prayer time especially right at the start of all the work that God had sent him to earth to do. So in the story he's tempted to use his supernatural powers in the wrong ways and not live God's way 
but he never gives in to those temptations. He is armed with a mighty weapon against the forces of evil, and that is the word of God which defends him. So, well, I need to go now. So enough of that story. I'll leave you to read it for yourselves if you'd like to do that. I need to get off into the kitchen and just check that the pancakes aren't under attack from Fido because I know he can eat quite a few once he gets going. But before I go, I'm just going to say a little prayer for us. And if you agree with the prayer, then please say Amen at the end, which means I agree or may it be so. So let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for Jesus and all who show us how to live well and care for others. Help us to be thoughtful in everything we say and do in these days ahead. Amen. Right, off into the kitchen to see what Fido is doing. Something mm, smells rather good. Oh my goodness, Fido, you are busy, aren't you? Wow, it's looking very good. Looking very good. Careful. Take great care. Good boy. Wow. Oh, Fido, you turned it over. That's looking good. Makes a pancake, stir a pancake, pop it in the pan. Fry a pancake, toss a pancake, catch it if you can. Makes a pancake, stir a pancake, pop it in the pan. Fry a pancake, toss a pancake, catch it if you can. 